Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I'm the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. I will continue today on looking at uh, Shiach, or Messiah, or the Christ. Now, last time I talked more about uh, how the Jews, or the Hebrews, uh, view, viewed um, that concept, uh, the, 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 the concept of the Mashiach, or the Messiah is very important uh, to the Jews. And um, the Jews pray, or most of the Jews, or some of the Jews pray every day that Mashiach, Mashiach would um, return. And of course, I said that the Jews have their own concept of Mashiach. And that is kind of uh, pretty sad. Because they have had that, or not all Jews, but many Jews have this certain concept that Mashiach will be an earthly ruler. So it will be a human being who um, will rule Israel and who will uh, establish a kingdom for the Jews. And of course, in the Old Testament, there's also many uh, who don't believe that, who believe that uh, Jesus, or not Jesus, but Messiah, is the one who uh, will establish a kingdom over, I mean, the whole earth, okay? He will rule the whole, the whole earth, not just the Jews. Of course, he will rule from Israel because or from Jerusalem, let's say from Jerusalem, because that is his city, but he will rule the whole world. And I think from the beginning, the Jews didn't understand that. And when I, again, when I talk about the Jews, we have a kind of today, we use that word for all Hebrews, uh, but in reality, the Jews are really the descendants of Judah. So, when I say choose, I mean uh, all Hebrews, okay? Hebrews, all the Hebrews, they had this idea that um, they wanted from the beginning this earthly ruler, which uh, they demanded right after they entered the promised land. Well, it's not right after because at first they had the judges God gave them judges because they couldn't follow God, okay? They had a hard time following God on their own, and they kept straying away from God's rules and God's instructions. And so God gave them the judges to kind of bring them back to God, to the real true king of Israel, okay? Now, I know that's hard. To say, well, God is our king, because eventually that's what the, the Jews did. They said, no, guess what? We want a king like all the other nations around us. And again, they fell into this, we want an earthly king, for goodness sakes. We don't want God to be our king. Yet God had in mind that eventually he will come become human and really be here uh, to be their king. Uh, that is That was the whole um, crux of everything, of, of God's plan. But the Israelites had a different plan. And especially Judah, where we get that name Jews from, Judah knew that he was the promised um what would you call it, the tribe, the promised tribe through which the king would come. So they demanded, um, you know, we want a king. And so what God gave the said, uh, eventually told Samuel, go ahead, you know, get them a king. So what they did they get? They got Saul. And Saul wasn't a good king. And so then finally God found a more adequate one, which was David. 
And of course, we know that through David's line, uh, the Messiah would come. But David was not the king that God had in mind. God said, no, 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 I'm not ready for a king. I want to be your king. Uh, you're going to have to wait for me to put things in place. And so David is only a, a symbol for through Messiah, Messiah. Okay, He is not the Messiah. He is not the true king of Israel. But God wanted them to wait for that true king. And so from the beginning, the Jews constantly wanted to have that king, but they failed. They failed miserably. I mean, those kings that they established, uh, they failed. Uh, right after Solomon, the kingdom was divided. Solomon couldn't even keep the kingdom, kingdom together. The kingdom was divided right after Solomon uh, into two. Uh, the, the ten tribes of um, Israel split off from Judah, Benjamin, and I don't know, Ephraim. But I just kind of know for sure that, that Judah and Benjamin were together. And then some of the Levites, um, of course, stayed with Judah as well. And so that, you know, they broke, the other broke loose. Why did they break? Uh, from uh, uh, the main, you know, the the main country, they did it themselves. <laughs> Why did they break off? Well, because they didn't. They did not agree with um, who is supposed to be king. Okay, they didn't agree. And the, the minute they broke loose, I mean, they all their kings were bad kings, and they all. They all um, sinned against God, and the kings uh, led the whole, you know, all the tribes into idolatry. So only on the Judah side, um, they had more kings that were actually bringing the people back to God again. But eventually, you know, still, they were still whoring with idols. And so God sent them into Babylonian captivity. They come back and the same thing happens again. They never, never really have a, a king as such. When they finally had a king again, uh, it wasn't really like, for instance, during Jesus' time, they had a king, but really it wasn't really a Jewish king. Um, Herod was not, the line of Herod was not true. Uh, so they didn't really have a king of Israel, but they tolerated, they tolerated it, um, even though uh, Herod's line was not uh, Jewish. I mean, true Jewish, definitely not through the lineage of David. So, however, the Jews constantly wanted this; they were waiting for Messiah uh, because they believed that he is going to establish uh, their state, their kingdom uh, that God has promised them. And they didn't want to um, acknowledge that it was God who will provide for them a redeemer and who will provide for them a Mashiach, will provide for them a king. And Again, going back, he wanted to be their, uh, their king. So God himself decided to come down and become their king. So, But the Jews, again, there today, they don't want to see that. They only want to see um, Mashiach as a earthly ruler. And that's kind of sad because everything else they kind of ignore. Lots of the prophecies about uh, Jesus's first coming, uh, they just totally ignore. So I made a little study about Isaiah, who had a lot of promises about the Messiah. Now my um, study focuses on all of the um, verses that um, I say I used to 
prophesy about the coming Messiah, even the ones that the Jews left out. Again, when you uh, see one of them that focuses on the suffering servant, which they call Messiah, then uh, Joseph, then they will ignore that. Matter of fact, a lot of times they even ignore uh, Messiah, Mashiach, Ben, ben uh, Joseph altogether because they focus on the real Messiah or the uh, Messiah, uh, Mashiach, ben, uh, ben David. But all of the prophecies are about the same person, the same person. Now, these prophecies from the, the prophets are not the only thing that God has given them to show them that Mashiach is coming, okay? Moses knew about the Mashiach, okay? So did Adam. Uh, There's so many promises that were given. Um, I would think even Abraham knew that Mashiach was coming. And so when we look at uh, symbolic representations, we get a better picture, and I will do that sometime later. Right now, I want to read... Um, the chapters, and I don't know if I get done in this one, but um, because there's 65 chapters, but not all chapters have prophecy of Mashiach in it. Again, why do uh, Jews not accept all the prophecies? Well, one of them is because they're focused on their idea of what kind of ruler they want. Not only that, they are, uh, you, you can only really understand some of these verses if you really have the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you can read them and still don't understand them, only if you want to, okay? And that's why, hey, I'll pick out the ones that I like, and I'm going to create the person that I want, Mashiach, uh, that Mashiach that I want, and so everything else I will ignore. But here are the ones. Uh, there is uh, chapter 2. That's why I'm starting. Verse 2. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established. Okay, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established. So, in other words, his temple will be established. And again, we have heard from a Jew that this is going to, that the Mashiach, will build the temple, nobody else. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Now, say that will be at the end, in the last days, he says here, right? Okay, so in the next one, will they will beat their swords into plowshares. Uh, plow shares okay that will be correlating with the end and the total end times when Mashiach Mashiach establishes his kingdom in this on this earth and then uh, verse 5 says come descendants of Jacob let us walk in the light of the Lord that's when Mashiach will be here and they will walk literally in the light of Mashiach now we go to chapter 7. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Now Jews will not accept this one. Okay, A virgin or a young woman will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Now, that word Emmanuel means God with us, okay? So God, Jesus said that he is God with us literally, okay? And so from here, let's go to, um, we're still in chapter 7. 6 says, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Okay, look at these descriptions. Again, we're talking about a child who's going to be born, 
Uzbekistan is given, the government will be on his shoulders. Okay, so he will be that ruler. The government will be on his shoulders means he will be ruler. He will be king. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, which who can accept, probably. But Mighty God, he's going to be Mighty God. Um, he's going to be Everlasting Father. He's going to be Prince of Peace. Does that show that this child who is going to be born will be God, literally God with us? He will be God in the flesh. Okay. As Christians, we can see that in the light of the Holy Spirit, we can see that this verse points to Jesus. But for a Jew, I'm not sure if they will accept that. But how else can you explain that? And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah prophesied about Mashiach here. Um, and how else can you interpret it? Seven says, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Okay. And the next one says, he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing, upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The seal of the Lord Almighty will be accomplished will accomplish this right there i mean that should just open anybody's eyes and say this is about mashiach here okay but if this is about mashiach then the previous one is about mashiach okay however also think about this he will reign on david's throne and over his kingdom forever forever the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end he will reign forever. And that is important. Okay? The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. I mean, if we cannot see that this is a prophecy of Mashiach, I guess then we don't have the Holy Spirit. So, here's the next one. Chapter 11. And when we read much, um, Isaiah and we read all this other stuff in between, yeah, maybe we don't see it as much. Um, maybe we glaze over. I don't know. But I have just pulled all of them out to show you um, the prophe uh, prophecies. And maybe some I I, I kind of skipped over to. I don't know. But um, I did the best I could finding them. Chapter 11 is a really good one. Okay. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. Okay, that's why Jesus or Mashiach is called the branch. And he will be called branch um, in Ezekiel as well. So I will bring that up um, later on when I study Ezekiel. That he is called the branch, and we need to write these down. Um, in fact, I need to underline it so I don't forget it. I want to do a specific one on, on all this uh, symbolic represent, representation of uh, Mashiach. So branch, he's called the branch. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, the branch will bear fruit. Jesse is the father of David. Okay, so Jesse is um, comes out that lineage. Um, so he's called the branch, and oh, from his roots a branch will bear fruit. Okay, we are his fruit. All the believers are his fruit. We are the branch, and we will he will bear fruit, and that fruit is not just. Um, Hebrews, or, but they are also Gentiles. Um, our number, uh, our verse 2 says, The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of might, the Spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. 3. 
and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide, decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness, he will judge the needs. With justice, he will give decision for the poor of the earth. Of the earth. Okay. Please read this correctly. Of the earth, not just the Jews. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness. Belt faithful faithfulness, his sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. And this is the um, really the very famous quote. And that's verse six. The wolf will live with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bees, the bear, the young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like an ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse, again, will stand a, a banner for the people peoples for will stand as a banner for the peoples and nations will rally to him and his resting place will be glorious okay in that day the lord will reach out his hand a second time second time to reclaim the surviving remnant of his people from assyria from lower egypt from upper egypt from cush from elam from Babylonia, from Hamas, from the islands of Mediterranean. He will raise a banner for the nations and gather. Okay, now listen to this. He's not just gathering his people. He will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel. He will assemble a scattered people of Judah from the four quarters of the earth. So who is doing that? It is Mashiach, okay? Mashiach will come. This whole thing is about Mashiach, talking about the uh, the branch of Jesse. Um, let's see, what else is it? Yeah, the root of Jesse. That's what it's called. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nation will rally on um, to him, and his resting place will be glorious. This is all talking about Mashiach. Okay, we are, I have read, um, was Isaiah 11, uh, 1 through 12. It's just, you just can't go any different. Uh, here we are, we see it, that this, that Mashiach will um, rule the nations, okay? will rule the nations, not just, um, it says, he will raise a banner for the nations, okay, for the nations. So all nations will be um, under him. He will be a king for all nations. And then he gathers the exiles of Israel, okay? So that is something to remember. Then he will exile the uh, the, uh, the uh, the Israel, the remnant that's left over, um, and gather them in their homeland, but not before he comes back. Mashiach will do that. Okay. So again, let's go to the next one. Next one will be. Ooh, this is going to be a big chunk. I haven't found anything between that. Chapter 28 is next. So this is what the Sovereign Lord says. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, for a sure foundation, the one who relies on it, the one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. Okay? 
Okay, again, this cornerstone, and I want to, because another sim symbolism for Mashiach is a stone. It is especially the cornerstone. Mashiach is the cornerstone. And the cornerstone for what? Um, that is the question. Uh, uh, a sure foundation. A sure foundation for what? Um, and it says, the one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. So that again doesn't say the Israelites will um, rely on him. No, everybody, all the nations of the world, anybody who will rely on, on him will be part of this building that's going to be built on the foundation. You don't have a foundation just to have a foundation. You don't have the cornerstone uh, and not continue the building, right? Um, so what um, are they building? Okay, what are they building on this cornerstone? Well, it's very simple. On this cornerstone, God will build the temple. Okay, Jews, they want a temple. They wanted a temple from the beginning, just like they wanted to have a king from the beginning, just like the other nations. Okay, they want a temple like the other nations, and guess what they got? Exactly that, a temple like the other nations. Um, I, when I look at a, a, a picture of the Temple of Solomon and Herod, um, they're not any different. These temples look like Gentile temples. There's no difference. Okay, that's not what God had in mind. People, we need to wake up, and I will show that um, some other time more. But God has no interest in building a temple uh, with stones, dead, cold stones. He wants to build his temple with living stones. And see, Jesus, he, or not Jesus, I shouldn't say Jesus yet, right? But Mashiach, Mashiach is that cornerstone, that living cornerstone. Okay, He is not a dead, dead rock. And so I don't think that God will build on this living cornerstone and this foundation with dead rocks. That's not the way it is. He will build on it with living stones. And of course, we know from Paul that this temple or this building that is being built on Jesus is a living temple, and then it's the church, okay? It's the body of Christ that's being built on Jesus. So, yeah, I don't know, but here it says, so this is what the sovereign Lord says, see, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, for a sure foundation, the one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. I don't know if Jews actually acknowledge that verse as referring to their Mashiach. Don't know. And then the next question is, how do they actually interpret this? Who is this cornerstone? Do they understand that Mashiach is that cornerstone? I don't know. All right, let's go to chapter 42. Here is my servant. Aha, the servant, right? And Mashiach, um, Isaiah talks a lot about this, the servant, okay, as the Mashiach, as the servant. And I think um, those are the verses that the Jews cannot uh, accept very uh, easily, that Jesus came or the Mashiach came to be this um, servant, the servant um, for God, who will bring about his will, because they see, again, Mashiach as the ruler and not as a servant. But here, this is chapter 42. Here's my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. Aha, there we go again, the nations. He will bring justice to the nations. Um, he will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness 
he will bring forth justice. Now, who do they think this is? Who do the Jews think this is talking about? Don't they understand this is about Mashiach? This is Mashiach. Okay? This is Mashiach. Uh, the spirit is upon him. Okay? Who will bring justice to the nation. Um, four, verse 4. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his teaching, the islands will put their hope. This is what God, the Lord, says, the creator of heavens, who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. This is again talking about Mashiach. Yes, Jews are supposed to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. They have never done that. Okay? When you are light, you have to really give your light. You can't uh, put your light under uh, a, you know, a covering so nobody can see it um, or keep it away from everybody. This is what Mashiach, Mashiach will accomplish. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. That is talking about Mashiach. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and I will make you to be a covenant for the people. Mashiach is a covenant. Okay? He is the new covenant. Because the Jews lost the old covenant. They destroyed it. Um, and God Send them away because they hoard with idols. Um, now he will make a new covenant. Um, and that new covenant is with the Jews and the Gentiles this time, not just the Jews. To open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. Now, this is talking about not literal dungeons, not literal. Uh, you know, blindness, but it's blindness, spiritual blindness, okay? He wants to set the captives free. He wants to open our eyes. He wants to open the eyes of everybody, the Jews first, okay? Gentiles second. Um, but when the Jews rejected him, he went to the Gentiles. Now, did he know that? Yes, of course he knew that. Because from the beginning, he wanted to reach the whole world everybody he wants everybody back in in into his uh, fellowship and and he wants to have a relationship with everybody so this again chapter 42 1 through 7 um is about mashiach okay it is totally about mashiach all right next one is chapter 43 and check the time. Oh my goodness. This is way over time. Because I need to keep it down. Well, I will I think I will stop today and then make the next one a part. Um I have five pages here of the quotes and really I want to read them all. Because uh, I think that's very important. It's a very good introduction to who Mashiach is, and and I hope you you take notes so you can write down these uh, verses and uh, read them for yourself, and just let the Holy Spirit guide you. Um, and so then next next time I will pick up on chapter forty two. Um, because that's what, how we went. You can also, this would be a good one for you to do, just read Isaiah 1 through, chapter 1 through 28. No, actually, I'm learning 42. Um, and just read them and see what kind of verses you can find. Because uh, I may have missed stuff. I don't know. But these are the ones that I just came up with. And again, I checked this out myself. I didn't take somebody's word for it. Um, so I will finish up today and then next time 
I will um, do the second uh, the second part. And it may have to be a third part too. Again, I only read one and a half pages and I have five. So, yep, I think I will be doing this for a while. All right. And I think I'm doing it because I think it's very important. Um, it is important that we are familiar with um, these prophecies. Now, I know Isaiah is very long, and I understand why people uh, just kind of get lost in the whole historic stuff that um, that, that uh, Isaiah was describing. Um, and just once in a while, he comes up with these prophecies. Um, so anyways, but I think it is important if we want to study and learn about Mashiach, we have to know what um, is written about him in the Old Testament. Okay, see you soon. Bye.